watching A Walk in the Garden on NCTV, Norfolk Community Cable Television. These shows are filmed in my garden and my kitchen throughout the gardening year. And we try to take you through a whole year in the garden, uh, at least once a month and usually twice a month when things really get busy. Right now it's mid-March and I'm standing near my garden, not even in it, and we have had a large snowstorm, our first major storm of the season, really, and here it is March. That came in about a week ago, and we're still starting to melt. The sun is warm at this time of year, and it will melt, but not too quickly because there was so much of it, about 18 inches, 16 to 18 inches. Uh, that put a big damper on my gardening plants. I was ready to start cleaning up, picking up sticks, pine cones, raking off gardens, but that's going to have to wait. So we're not gonna to spend too much time outdoors and then we'll go inside and do a little seasonal cooking. Uh, what else are you going to do but work on plants inside and seeding, waiting for the season to come and doing some cooking uh, before you can get outside and really start working. Hopefully in another month, things will change and we will be able to get out here. I was hoping to show you crocuses in bloom and chives coming up. They're working on it underneath the snow, but we can't see them quite yet. And it's too early to cut things back. Things like lavender and southern wood, those will wait until I see some new growth, new foliage on them. Once things dry up a little though, I can cut down some of these herbs. The uh, tarragon and the oregano, those can be cut at any point and get ready to rake out. But right now, we just have to wait and hold on. The same with the perennial garden. There's really not much we can do until the snow melts. And then it will be a flurry of activity as we try to get everything done in a short time because things will suddenly pop up when the weather changes. Right now, we just need to walk around a little bit and make sure that the deer aren't consuming many of the plants using the deer spray. You can start doing some pruning now of trees, definitely broken branches, crossing branches, uh, and that sort of thing. Boxwood and holly can also be pruned at this time if you can get to it. Uh, there are openings in the snow and that's a good time to prune. However, don't prune your spring blooming shrubs, your rhododendrons and azaleas, unless you have broken branches because you'll cut off any bloom buds that have formed last year and you'd like to keep the bloom. So on spring blooming shrubs, wait until after they have bloomed. Evergreens can be pruned now. Uh, we're getting almost to the end of the season for that. So it's time to prune some of those down because you're not going to sacrifice any blooms by doing so. The uh, vegetable garden, again, holds my brush pile and uh, I've gotten my burning permit, was all set to burn brush, and then the snow came along. So no brush burning for now. We'll have to wait again for that until things settle down a little here and we can get in and get the job done. You do need a burning permit in Norfolk if you want to do any open burning. It does end May 1st, and you do need to go down to the uh, police station to get that permit. And you also need, on the day you're going to burn, to call the fire department to see if burning is permitted that day. On days when there's heavy wind, they don't allow burning. So this will be a task that needs to be done once the snow melts, and then we can get in the garden and start planting some of the early crops. Now let's move around to the backyard a little bit. In the backyard now, and again, we've got lots of snow back here. Uh, I've dug some paths. I dug a path out to my shed so that I could get my seed starting materials out of it and also check my mouse traps that are in there. Uh, we tend to get mice in there in the winter. And so I wanted to make sure I, I check them frequently. I also needed to make sure there was a hole in the pond. Uh, it iced over. Uh, the snow was heavy enough and then it started to melt and iced over. So I did, I was able to poke a little hole carefully into the pond so that I can exhaust the gases from it. The ice melter is in there and it's trying, but it hasn't succeeded yet to get through the heavy ice that is on the pond. Hopefully this weekend with temperatures predicted to go up to almost 60, 
we will see some good melting. But then there will be some freezing again next week. So it's going to be constant to keep that hole in the ice. So going forward, hopefully the fish were not injured by the freeze over for a few days before I was able to make a hole in the ice. We'll just have to wait and see. I think they'll probably be okay. Now let's go up nearer to the house where we have a little break in the snow at least. We have a, a great number of birds that come to my feeder and I've continued to feed them and I'll continue to feed them until probably they can find some of their own items here and there. Uh, I keep filling this probably daily and also uh, if you saw the show the last episode I made a bird seed wreath using uh, flour and gelatin and bird seed and hung it out and it promptly broke even though I put a metal ring in the middle. So a solution to that when I hung a second wreath was to put it in a used onion bag and this is just a bag that onions came in and I cut a little slit in the back to insert my wreath and hung it up and put a bow on it. The birds can get the seeds right through the mesh of the bag and it gives a little winter decoration and some extra food for the birds. I keep filling the feeder as I said and uh, the chickadees may even come down while I'm standing here. They're pretty brave and they'll come when I'm out here. The rest of the birds are making spring-like sounds and that will increase as the temperatures rise. And we'll see more in different birds too. We can't count on the wrens being back until about the first part of May. So if you have wren houses, get them out before the first of May, but there's no hurry for wrens. Bluebirds can be back as soon as March, so birdhouses should be cleared and ready for them right now or very soon. I cleared off a little spot here. I had evergreen boughs over my uh, bulb garden that's up nearest the house to hopefully keep them from uh, coming up too soon and it seemed to have worked. Now it's time that I don't mind if they do come up and uh, I have some daffodils, crocuses. There's a few early crocuses right here that are ready to bloom and we get a little sunny day and we'll have some nice blue crocuses right there. So there is a touch of spring and at least a thought that spring may be coming sooner or later. <sighs> but for now we're going to go inside, do a little cooking and work with some plants. I've set up for doing some indoor garden work. Uh, it's a lot more pleasant in here than out in the snow and we have a few things that we can do inside to get ready for when the weather does change and we are able to get out. Uh, house plants are one thing and cuttings. We have a lot of cuttings which uh, I've taken last fall and what I'm doing now is pinching them out, continuing to do that. This one's already branched once but it's con it will continue to uh, branch as we pinch out these little new growths from each of the areas where it's starting. And you can start when the new growth is just tiny. And this will help the plant branch. Be sure to keep your house plants and cuttings. Uh, these are getting to be pretty big for the small pots they're in. Unfortunately, I don't have the room for huge pots all over. So I need to keep them watered uh, at least once a week, sometimes twice if it gets really cold and the heat is on in here or we burn the wood stove. It dries out the air and they need to be watered. I have them on trays so I can put a little water in the bottom and that helps evaporate and give a little humidity to the air. But they do need to be watered quite frequently and a little fertilizer can now be added to all your house plants and the cuttings uh, to give them a little boost. The soil that they were planted in is getting kind of depleted and you want to keep them going. Half strength is about right. Some of the cuttings I never even got transplanted. They are more than one in a container, so I need to give each of them their own little flower pot. I use two kinds of soil, germinating soil for planting and then a uh, nice organic potting soil for potting these up. And I'm just basically taking them out of the pots and putting them on a little soil in the bottom and then filling back in with some of the new soil.
And again, we had two plants in one small pot. This will give them a little more space and a little more soil to work with. And every time you pot something up, you want to be sure to give it a good drink of water to really uh, pack that soil around the roots. And we're probably going to get water all over the table, too. These will go up in a container up in the sunny area in my sunroom. We did some uh, potting last time in the uh, milk jugs, and I'm going to do some more. The milk jugs are out under the snow, and they're going to just stay there until spring. I'm, I don't have to do anything with them. But I will do another one. I add some of the germinating soil, which is a finer soil that's appropriate for germinating. And today I want to plant some burgundy gallardia. I don't need too many of them. They're a uh, perennial flower, and they do need some time outside where the temperatures are cooler. <coughs> One of the things you can do is put them in the refrigerator, but uh, it's just as easy to plant them in one of these pots and put them outside. And it doesn't, they don't need to be uh, planted very deeply at all. But I don't want them too close together because I don't need too many of the plants. And I'm just going to push them into the soil, perhaps cover them just a little bit. I've already made a tag which I'll put in. Incidentally, if you haven't watched my shows before, this is a milk jug that has holes punched in the top and bottom and is cut about a third of the way up. And we tape it shut, and this will go out near the fence in my garden in the sun and in the snow at this point after we put a piece of tape on it. You'll notice I've left a little hinge. I can open the lid and close it again in the spring when things become a little more uh, settled. And we need to be sure we mark it. And then I also put it in a book. With the date that I planted it. And it's red, so I'll put that on it too. And this will go out into the garden in the uh, area with the other milk jugs. And I can add other milk jugs later uh, as we go along. I'd like to possibly put some of my other crops out there. I, don't, I have a plant uh, shelf for starting things, but it's not very big, so I like to start more than I can fit on the shelf. I save that one for the more tender things. Last month, I picked some pussy willows enjoyed them in the house, along with some other branches of forsythia, and uh, noted when I went to get rid of the things that had already bloomed, that one of the pussy willows had formed roots. So I'm keeping it in the water, and when I can get in outside, or even in a pot in here, I will plant the pussy willow, and then I'll have a pussy willow to transplant somewhere else in my garden. Pussy willows and forsythia both root extremely easily in water. so. Uh, I have enough forsythia, so I didn't wish to root any of that. But it would be nice to have another pussy willow. So I've got that in uh, water ready to go. One of the other things that I kind of like is uh, to have some grass, a little pot of grass. And this uh, wooden box has a little plastic liner. And I'm going to put some of the germinating soil in there. Fill it pretty full. and pat it down. And I have what's called cat grass. And if you have cats, the cats really enjoy having a snack of cat grass. And uh, you can grow it quite easily. It's actually a wheat. And 
I'm just going to spread some of it on the soil here and just cover it very lightly with a little bit more soil. Just barely cover those seeds. I'm not growing it for a cat because I don't have one, but I do like the same grass as a uh, decoration for spring and Easter to have some grass to put the Easter eggs in. Just a little bit of decoration here. And this one I'm going to cover with a piece of plastic wrap until it germinates. And again, I'll put that up on my seed starting area inside this time. Now, to start other seeds, and I would like to start some Brussels sprouts, these are going to go under my lights in uh, my light rack. Actually, that was built by my father about 40 years ago and sent to me in the mail, believe it or not, and I had to assemble it. It was all cut and directions made, and I was able to assemble it and add the fluorescent lights to it, which he had also included. This is a seed starting unit, and there are many similar ones available. I filled this chamber with water and soaked a piece of uh, wicking material in that water till it's wet, and it will continue to wick water up into the under the seeds that I'm going to plant in this pot. You can tell I reuse them. They don't make this particular one anymore, but a little duct tape helps in fixing spots that have cracked. And I'm going to fill the cells with the germinating soil. This is available at garden centers and online. And I've dampened it. It comes and it's fairly dry in the package, which makes it easier to handle initially. And then uh, you just wet it thoroughly and let it absorb the water. I wet this down this morning. Having the watering chamber underneath means the plants aren't disturbed. They get the water they need, and you don't have to water as often. You just keep the uh, chamber underneath filled. So about once a week I go through and see what needs to be watered. Oh, more in this one. It's good to fill them right up so that the plants can stay in a little while. The, br the Brussels sprouts that I'm going to put in here will be able to go out in the garden fairly early. They will take a light frost, not a heavy one, just a light one. And the Brussels sprout seeds are quite small. And I only need to add one or two to each cell and cover it very lightly. These will come up in about a week. And at that point, hopefully the weather will have changed enough that I can move them out to my garden shed, which does have a plexiglass panel that lets in the sun. And I'm just slightly covering them so they have good contact with the soil. I'll know in a week what isn't coming up if uh, I missed one of them or it needs to have another one put in. It's not too late to do that when they start coming up. There, so this is ready and we put on this uh, dome which also helps keep some of the moisture in and this will go under the lights as well. I will also be doing my impatient seeds now. I want uh, probably 48 of those. I just did a dozen of the Brussels sprouts. That will be plenty of Brussels sprout plants if they all grow and prosper. And 
Then I can also do peppers now under the lights and that will just about fill up my light capacity for a while. Uh, cabbage can be started either here or outside and again if you have the uh, milk jugs you can put the cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts in those and put them out in the uh, winter sowing area and they will start to come up. It's not too late in March to put those out. Now I have one more thing here that uh, I need to do and that's uh, this plant needs to be divided and I have a new pot I've put some of the soil in it and I need to tip this one out. This is an oxalis and it's not tipping out too well but it's a plant with bulbs. I think we're going to have to get under it and just pull it out this way. And I'm going to divide this in half and probably make a mess, but I want you to see the bulbs that are underneath. And it does make new ones, so we have all these little bulbs and I need to put them in. It's going to look really messy for a while, but it will come up later. I think we need more soil underneath it. And then I will discard the soil that's in the pot and repot it so I have it Again, these little, little corms or little bulbs. They're kind of funny little things. Uh, the plant comes in green. I thought it also. Uh, this is what you often see as a shamrock plant in the flower store. And again, they will grow as a house plant very nicely and go outside in the spring. But I want to divide this into two and put a little more soil in here. Again, these two are not going to look very good for a while, but they will perk up. And especially this summer. What happens when they get too crowded is that they need way too much water. And you're ending up watering it three or four times a week instead of once. So knowing that they will multiply it's good to keep them spread out a little bit. We'll just poke these down in and add a little more soil on top. There's a couple extra bulbs and they will grow. I already have a couple of the plants and I'll take off any broken leaves, throw them away. So I will be probably thinking about sharing some of these with others later on when they grow and fill out. While we're stuck inside with the weather not cooperating outside, it's a good time to repot any house plants that need it, especially if you're going to put them out for the summer. Again, I'll repot the rest of it. Into the pot that it was in. And give it a good drink of water here. And these will be ready to go outside once we're frost free, which will be about the end of May. Again, we'll get rid of these, all these pieces a little later. Now the last thing I want to do is something that I've made to do for a bit of a centerpiece for my spring table. Move some of these things. And I've made a container using a tomato can. This is a two pound tomato can and I wanted something kind of rustic. So you put two rubber bands around the, the uh, can itself and then you raid the burn pile for sticks. 
and I cut my sticks about five and a half inches. You can measure your pot and decide how big you want to make the sticks. And then once you've cut one stick, use that to cut the others. And then I've, instead of leaving the rubber bands on, I'm going to tie string around the middle of this. And I want to put several layers of it. This is just garden twine. You want it quite tight because it's going to take the place of those rubber bands. my strings and then we should be able to cut off the rubber bands and have it hold and we'll be taking that into the dining room a little later and building our centerpiece now it's time to do some cooking in the kitchen of course after we clean up a little bit and wash our hands I'll see you there since St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, I thought I'd do some Irish, at least Irish-oriented, if not original Irish recipes, although this is a pretty original bread recipe that I'm doing. It's a whole grain Irish bread, and it's an Irish soda bread, uh, leavened by actually baking powder and soda in this case, and it's one of the easiest breads to make. I've got four cups of flour here. I use three cups of whole wheat and one cup of regular all-purpose. You can use all whole wheat. Uh, they suggest whole wheat pastry flour. Pretty hard to find. Regular whole wheat is not. I'm going to add about two to three tablespoons of sugar and then a teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to stir that in, make a little well in the middle, and add one and a half cups of buttermilk, and two tablespoons of either melted butter or oil. I'm using oil today. Move my dirty dishes over that way. And then I'll just stir this together. until the liquid has been at this point I'm going to turn it out onto a floured surface it still isn't completely incorporated but we'll take care of that and gather it together and knead it together to finish incorporating the buttermilk and oil. I might have used a bit more buttermilk in this to make it a little easier to pull together. Flatten it a bit. Put it in on a piece of parchment paper. And then I'll use a knife to cut a fairly deep cross in the middle. 
This will go into the oven at 400 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. The next thing I'm going to do is a potato soup. Potatoes are quite an Irish food and so I thought that would be a good thing to have. It's also very nice in the spring weather when it's a little chilly to have a nice soup on the table. And this can be made vegetarian if you wish. I'm using butter but you could also use a uh, margarine in this, a vegetable product if you so wished. And I'm melting some butter and then I'm going to add one leek and let that cook for a few minutes. And I've sliced up the leek. Leeks are very good. They're a little milder than onions. They have a, a very nice flavor in a soup. They are hard to clean sometimes. You have to be able to be sure that you clean them extremely well because dirt gets down into the leaves. I removed the outer leaves and cut it in half lengthwise and then I was able to get down and really get it cleaned. I'm going to add the uh, leeks to the butter and let them saute. I want to put this on high. And we'll let these saute until they're nice and soft. And that's going to take about five minutes. All right, our leeks have cooked down until they're nice and kind of translucent. And I'm going to add some flour, uh, three tablespoons of flour while we're still cooking, and a half teaspoon of sugar. I also need to add some salt and pepper, and I'm going to use some white pepper, just because it's not going to put too many specks in the soup, and some salt, and we can correct that seasoning later as we continue. And I'm going to make sure that all of the flour is coated with the butter mixture. And at this point, I'm going to add one cup of vegetable broth or chicken broth. Again, if you want to make it vegetarian, vegetable broth is the way to go. And this will thicken as it cooks. And you want to make sure you do cook this part quite well so that the flour won't have a floury taste in the soup. We're going to be adding more liquid. So this gets fairly thick. You could also, instead of vegetable broth, use some of the potato water that you cooked. Two cups of potatoes. Two cups of cubed potatoes. And, but I just chose to use the broth for a little richer flavor. We'll stir in the potatoes. And three cups of milk. regular milk. It wouldn't be vegan, but uh, and because of the milk and the cheese that we're going to put in. But vegetarian, yes, it can be. You could probably use almond or soy milk and Reduced cheese, and then we're going to add a cup of cheddar cheese or shredded cheddar cheese. And I need to measure that with a cup here. Most things I had pre measured, but not this. And we'll save some of the cheese for garnishing. If you wish, you can add a cup of uh, cubed ham or corned beef to this soup to make it a little heartier. I'm going to leave it just as it is. And we're going to let this simmer for about half an hour. So we'll just let it continue to cook while we go ahead and do some more things. This is the season, mid-March, of March Madness, which is college basketball finals, which 
I'm very involved in watching, not participating, of course, but I love to watch it. Uh, I did go to a Big Ten school, so I'm always rooting for the Big Ten. And so this is a good time to make a few appetizers to go with uh, some football watching. It's also a good time to have a St. Patrick's Day party, and again, these appetizers are very appropriate for that. I'm going to start out by making a St. Patrick's Day cheese ball, and I've already put into my food processor eight ounces of cream cheese. And to that, I'm going to add three green onions. Uh, the original recipe called for you to mix this all together in either the mixer or by hand. The food processor helps you avoid some of the chopping. Uh, I'm also going to add a quarter pound of sliced deli corned beef and a cup, half a cup of chopped pecans and we want a tablespoon, half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard which is leaking all over. We're about to the end of that. A teaspoon of horseradish. And two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. And at this point, I am going to chop everything in together. And we'll probably need to at least once scrape down the sides so that we get it completely mixed. Take out the knife. I'll get out a piece of plastic wrap. And we're going to put all of the mixture right in the middle. And then I'll just pull the wrap up around it to make a, a ball. The cream cheese was softened, so it's uh, not as firm as it's going to be when it's been refrigerated. And then we'll put it into the refrigerator. And when it is hardened, we can bring it out of the refrigerator. And unwrap it. onto our serving plate. And now I'm going to decorate it a little bit. This is the fun part. And I'm going to make him into a little leprechaun. So this is going to be part of his hat. And this is going to be the other part. It's a green pepper that's been cut. And if you have a green pepper that has a long end, it works better. You have a taller hat. And I'm fastening it on with a little pick. Then we want to add a face, a couple black olives for eyes, a red pepper mouth, and if we wanted to, we can do a little yellow pepper nose. I was
And then the fun part is to use a carrot and the vegetable peeler to give him some hair. And you just peel some long strips of carrot. And you can add those as hair around the edge. And we may need to cut them a little bit. You can double this recipe and have a larger leprechaun. Just put them under the hat. And anyway, he's kind of cute for St. Patrick's Day. And not too hard to make. You use the uh, stem end for the brim of the hat and the tip end of the pepper for the break this one off. Tip end of the pepper for the crown of the hat. So there's our little leprechaun. Serve him with a few crackers. We'll put a few crackers on the plate. And I'm going to move that over to the side for now. See, I think his hat needs to go forward a little bit. And we'll make another uh, quick order. And this one I'm again starting with a half a cup of cream cheese. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of Russian salad dressing or Thousand Island. This one's Thousand Island. You can use either one. And I'm going to mix that well. Add a quarter cup of sauerkraut. These are going to be Reuben roll-ups. So you want the ingredients that are in a Reuben sandwich. The next thing I'm going to get out are some uh, spinach wraps or tortillas. And I have two here, which I'll use. And I'm going to divide the mixture between them and spread it out. Then I'm going to layer on some shredded Swiss cheese. And some thinly sliced deli corned beef. I don't need too much. And then we will tightly roll each of them up. And 
wrap in plastic wrap. I picked the green spinach tortillas because it is St. Patrick's Day. Normally I would have used just the brown ones, but I thought they were festive to have the spinach ones for this. And then we'll put them in the refrigerator until they're good and cold. And once they've gotten good and cold, we'll open them up. You'll probably lose the first few slices at the end, but I'm going to slice these in about one inch pieces, three quarters of an inch to one inch. Then we can add those to our hors d'oeuvre tray. top and these are the Reuben roll-ups so we have our hors d'oeuvre finished now we need to make a dessert the dessert I'm going to make are Bailey's Irish cream cheesecakes miniature cheesecakes and I've already crushed up some chocolate cookies uh, you can use Oreos mixed with a little butter and put them into my cupcake papers in my mini cupcake pans now I'm going to mix six ounces of cream cheese with a half cup of sugar and three tablespoons of cocoa. And this can get a little messy, so we'll just go slow and hope for the best. Now that that's mixed up and at least moistened, I will add a half a teaspoon of vanilla and a quarter cup of sour cream to the mixture. And continue beating it. Then we'll add one egg. And two tablespoons of Bailey's Irish cream liqueur. have that well combined and we'll fill our little mini muffin tins and we want to fill them quite full and I found that the tablespoon measure works pretty well to fill them These are going to go into a 325 oven. I'll fill my other ones later, but at 325 for about 15 minutes. Then they're refrigerated. And we'll finish some, a few off that have been made and refrigerated. I've whipped some cream, three quarters of a cup of heavy cream, 
with two tablespoons of the Irish cream and six tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. And I'm going to put some on each one. If you want to be fancy, you can use a pastry tube to do this and a nice little fluff on top. But a spoon also works. And of course you'll refrigerate these until they're served. And then I'm going to add a little shamrock cookie to each one. I happen to have a shamrock cutter and I'm just going to put a little shamrock on the top of each of them. Just a little extra added bonus. That concludes our cooking. Let's take our things into the dining room and build a little centerpiece while we go. Here we are in the dining room with our meal almost ready, but I'd like to finish a centerpiece. I have a piece of wood here that's been cut out of a log. You can purchase these. This one uh, actually was homegrown from a tree that lost a branch and was cut into this piece, which I saved and cleaned a bit and uh, wash the top well. Our little container that we made with the sticks goes with this. And I bought a maidenhair fern. Now this one will not survive outside, but it does fit in quite well and it will make a nice house plant. I'm also going to add, last year I had such beautiful ferns that I dried a few. So I'm gonna add a few around it of the ones that I dried just around the edge as kind of a accent and I dried a variety of them. A little owl and then for a little color I want to add a small pot with a primrose. And the primrose can be then put outside. If you buy a primrose now, keep it watered and then you can plant it outside. Other things that you can add are some of the preserved moss around the edge. Again, this is set mainly to be of interest to the front. It depends how many people you're serving, how you'd want to set it up. You might want to put something else on the back or more ferns in the back of the area. But this is just kind of a little spring woodland centerpiece. Uh, good for St. Patrick's Day or any spring day. And you can keep rearranging it a bit. And I'll probably pull this out so I can keep that and know how to take care of it. But it's kind of fun to have something using some house plants for a change. And uh, some of the things you may have around the house and the little container also fits in with the woodland theme with the uh, log. This is our uh, meal. We have the soup, the potato soup, which I've garnished with some chopped green onion, the Irish whole grain bread to go with the soup, the hors d'oeuvres, which we could start our meal with, and they would include, uh, again, we'll take that out, the corned beef and pecan leprechaun and our green Reuben roll-ups. Thank you for joining me. I'm Liz Davey and you've been watching A Walk in the Garden on NCTV, Norfolk Community Cable Television. Please join me again next time when hopefully spring will be here and we can get outside and get some work done. <music>